Hi, I'm just doing another talk video, and I know that this came out really quickly after my last one, but um, I guess I'm kind of sensitive to the uh, criticism that I get for uh, my decisions on doing cam. Um, look, cam chose me. I, back whenever I was... Uh, in my first relationship, every boyfriend that I've ever been with has been like, look at this thing, you could do this and make money. Um, essentially, every single guy that I've ever spoken to or known or dated or anything, uh, every guy who's ever expressed interest in me, um, guys have always just thought that I was a uh, walking, talking, breathing sex doll that came to life. And... Um, Guys have always, like, seriously, ever since puberty. Like, guys just, like, they'll talk to me and they'll bring up sex. And then, like, whenever sex stops being the topic of, of conversation, they throw me away like garbage. Like, it's always been that way. Um, the guys that I was with, uh, they, my, like, last husband, my last boyfriends, like, they've literally, like, they, they wouldn't be able to tell you anything about me. They wouldn't be able to tell you my sh favorite show. They wouldn't be able to tell you, um, anything about my mental health or any, like, all they knew was that they liked to fuck me. And... Then after I was just like, you know what, fuck it. If, if everybody's gonna perv on me, fucking pay me for it. So I set up the OnlyFans, and uh, after I did that, then CPS gets called on me, even though the entire re I mean, like, first and foremost, I thought to do it because it's just like, well, fuck it. Uh, guys are always bugging me, you know? And then, uh, I. Re the, like, what really pushed me towards this was, uh, my daughter, um, what I was working, like, I was doing YouTube and cam, and I had, uh, a nine-to-five job, and, um, I was bartending, and I had no time for my, like, I, I couldn't see my daughter. I, uh, I had to, um, have teachers help my kid help me get my kid out of the car because she was crying so hysterically um there have been times when she was like throwing herself down the ground and like uh, she would like have tantrums so bad she would like hit herself and stuff and it's because she couldn't spend time with me she couldn't see me and I knew she missed me and um I knew it was because my schedule made it too complicated to spend any time with her. And, um, it, it was causing her too much emotional distress. She couldn't handle the time apart from me. And, um, then working on CAM allowed me to have full control over my schedule to the point where, uh, every time I had her, I could make sure that, um, while she was in my care, that she had my time and attention. And even still, I still have to work for a little bit, um, uh, but it's nothing like, and, and her tantrums totally stopped. The entire time I was working at the pawn shop, every time I saw her, it was like, um, I would get her for one hour and then I'd have to take her home and the tantrum, it was, it was traumatic. It was traumatic. It was, uh, one of the most difficult experiences of my life. Like having to drop my kid off and knowing, like just, just knowing how unhappy she was while I was like that. I couldn't do that. But then, uh, CPS got called on me recently and all they wanted to talk to me about was Cam. And, uh, I mean, yes, my daughter, she knows that I do cam, but she doesn't know what cam is. Her understanding of it is guys give me money because they think that I'm pretty. Like, that's, that's like, uh, and she knows that, um, uh, whenever I'm locked up and, um, the side of the house, she can't have any access to it. She has to text me to get what she wants. Like, we had a system for it. Like, it was, she's not exposed to it. She's not, like, it's not anything, um, uh, like, literally, the only thing that she has to worry about is how other people are going to think about us. Like, if, uh, anyone who knows, you know? And then, um, 
it's like that that is a, what our problem is like it's not like what danger she's in it's like everybody else it's literally having to worry about everybody else's being an asshole about this and it's not like uh it's weird too because it's like all that shit I was talking about earlier like how guys just want to perv on you and then you're like fucking pay me for it and then like I'm still the bad guy I'm the bad guy again after I start charging for it and stuff then um even now whenever I'm so fucking fed up with it I just start charging for it I'm evil I'm that's horrible of me it's horrible to want money from men fucking goddamn me for asking for money from somebody who only wants sex from me like, every single, like, gold digger situations and stuff, that motherfucker only wants sex. He only looks at her as something he could stick his dick into. And then whenever guys realize that, hey, I'm not a sex doll that came to life. I'm my own fucking person. Like, I, I'm a real-life human being with that does stuff besides have a wet pussy. And then as soon as uh, that is, it, it's like... The, then I, I'm invisible. Then I'm not a person anymore. And then I'm nothing. And then it's, it's like I'm, you can't win. You can't win. Like you, like being ugly sucks. Being hot sucks. Being, uh, just living. It sucks. Like everything really just sucks. Like everything that you're looking like, uh, I think the only thing that probably doesn't actually suck as being rich. But then that probably comes with its own host of problems too. Because like whatever, I was fucking that. Um, oh, I didn't fuck him. Uh, that uh, dude that um, was impotent. What's his name? That guy. Yeah, I made a video about that like a year ago. Um, I was a... Uh, I, I don't know what the statute of limitations are on saying what that was. But... Um, yeah, he was very, very rich, and his life was a piece of shit. Like, he was miserable. Um, so, yeah, I guess his, uh, life just sucks. <laughs> and there's, uh, I don't know what the point of this video was, but, uh, everybody's an asshole, and, um, yeah, bye.